uh, we're down to the last few lightning talks, um, and I thought I'd better squeeze myself in because um, I discovered something the other day uh, that I thought made shaded relief maps really, really nice. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I could look at uh, elevation models all day. Um, and these are just a few of the examples um, that I've been working through um, in the last little while. So, what we want to do is we want to take one elevation model, um, digital elevation model. Uh, this is the Intermap uh, 10 meter DTM. So, we take that, we add it into QGIS and we add a color gradient to it. So, we add some tinting and we can use QGIS to make a hill shade. Who's using uh, 216? QGIS 216 at the moment. Yeah, using the live, live renderer. Yeah, if you haven't, if you get the latest version of QGIS and you press F7, it opens up this live renderer and you don't have to go through any dialogue boxes and close and open things. Uh, you can just uh, style your layer um, and it updates live in the window. So this, this is taking that initial elevation model and it's just generating a hill shade on the fly. Now, there are a few little niggles with it. Uh, you could probably see some sort of grid effect uh, in there, but I know uh, great minds are working on the problem. So you can make a hill shade. You can then use the blend modes in QGIS to take your colored uh, DEM and blend that using the multiply blend mode with your hill shade and you get something that looks pretty nice. I mean I can look at maps like that and it makes a great backdrop and you get away from these sort of really flat things that uh, people in local authorities quite like or, or are just used to. Um, so uh, I'm quite keen to, to get more people um, using background maps like this. <laughs> But I came across this uh, technique called texture shading. Um, and I don't begin to even understand the maths behind it. Um, but there's a great little executable that you can run if you're on Windows. Uh, there's a, a shell script you can run on, on Linux on a Mac. And it's developed by this guy called Leland Brown. Um, and it really emphasizes the drainage network and the hierarchy in, in, a, in a landscape. Um, I found it doesn't work so well in, in Scotland because everything's very rounded, maybe it's because we're too wet here, but you put some nice dry American landscapes in there um, and you've got sharp ridges um, and it just, it looks really good. But anyhow, uh, you can go to that link, texture shading, it's not blocked um, on any firewall. And what you do is you take one elevation model again. Uh, before you go any further though, you've got to do a little bit of manipulating. Uh, you use GDAL and you convert that to a 30-bit floating uh, image. And then you use these two uh, little programs that he has um, he's put together. And the first one over here takes a texture and you can put a number in there and that um, changes uh, the emphasis of the map. Um, do you want to emphasize the ridges? Do you want to emphasize the valleys? Or something in between. So you can play with that number over there and that generates a texture. And then the next thing to do um, is to export that as a geotiff and you can play with this number here and that changes the contrast and again that affects the highlight, uh, highlights of, of the final image. So you can play with that. And what you end up with is a texture shaded elevation model where it's emphasized the streams and the rivers and also the ridge lines or where there's a sharp change uh, of elevation. So sort of uh, you can see this is, uh, that's Glen Dole, Corrie Fee up in the Angus Glens and you can see the edges where there's a sudden change in elevation that gets highlighted. And it's a slightly different way of looking at your elevation model but it creates a really nice effect. You can add your, your colors in so you can get um, a little bit more context. 
You can then blend that with your hill shaded image and you get something that's just a little bit richer than your regular um, sun shaded image. Don't know, you can see that's without, that's with, it's slightly darker, um, it's just because they're grayscale images, but you're getting a little bit extra um, information. If you go to that texture shading website, they've got some fantastic examples of the Yosemite Valley um, where you've got differences of a thousand meters um, and more. Okay. Now, something else that uh, some of you might have played with, I know Stephen Kay has done a lot of work with Blender, but you can use this um, piece of open source software to generate um, shaded relief images. This is using uh, the Ordnance Survey Terrain 50 DTM. Uh, and if you look on online, uh, there are heaps of uh, tutorials on how to do this. But the nice thing about this is that it actually models real sunlight. So you get sunlight bouncing off surfaces. Um, and in areas like up here in, under the cliffs, uh, you actually get reflected light in there, so you're getting a far more realistic uh, landscape. And I know Art was talking earlier about uh, sort of parallel processing, and he was talking, you know, doing one and a half gigabytes in seconds. Um, well, a, a 2,000 pixel by 2,000 pixel tile of, of Terrain 50 takes about 10 minutes to render on, on my machine, and that's a Xeon... Uh, eight core processor um, so it, it, it's not fast uh, I've got 91 tiles to render so uh, I'll be here till after Christmas but but blender generates these really really nice landscapes um, again it might not be suitable for all your mapping applications but if you want a nice shaded relief image uh, and you've got a bit of time uh, certainly to learn blender because it's not the most straightforward um, you can do that. There's a link at the bottom of that slide there, um, and there's somebody's written a nice GIS add-on, so it actually recognizes uh, geo-referenced images. Um, so I'm busy working on creating a, a shaded relief map for the whole of the UK um, using Blender um, and stitching it all together, but uh, I need some help scripting it, so uh, doing it one at a time is, is not the way forward. So, quick comparison then. Um, if, you, if you've got elevation models and you want hill shades and you want some cool maps, um, you can use QGIS or GDAL. Um, and there are a number of different ways of doing it. Uh, it's quick, it's easy. Uh, you can find them in the processing and the raster menus. Um, and if you've got recent versions of QGIS, just highlight your elevation model and press F7. But you do get some artifacts. Uh, texture shading. It's very easy to use. Um, if you're on Linux, you need to compile it um, and you need to, to play with your rasters and you get really, really nice effect. Uh, and then if you want to go for something different again, go for Blender. Um, it's just slow. You need to process your raster again. Uh, you need integers rather than floating point numbers. And uh, the more RAM, the faster the CPU. Uh, and also if you've got one of these NVIDIA CUDA graphics cards, uh, the better um, it, it runs. Yeah, so Blender's nice, it's slow, but it's lovely. Uh, but you do get this really realistic um, lighting effect. And for inspiration, go and have a look at uh, some of the work that these guys do. Um, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, uh, we'll have a chat with Stephen Kay actually at the back uh, over there because he does, he does really good stuff. So I am, I'm very much a beginner here when it comes to um, to doing this kind of thing but certainly those little tools will will help you uh, make some make some nice base maps brilliant thank you